Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. So my name is John Anderson. I'm the Medical Marketing Manager here at Formlabs. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is print preparation for healthcare innovators. Uh, so essentially, we uh, are going to be talking about best practices for successful print, uh, 3D printing uh, using preform. So, uh, and then also some uh, some discussion about how to um, how to best uh, prepare those models uh, for import into preform. So, Home Labs has created a design guide, um, and these are general guidelines for um, optimal printability. Right. Um, so we do always recommend. Um, that you follow those uh, those design guides um, uh, where possible. Uh, we understand that it's not always possible. There are going to be some kind of outliers where you're going to have to uh, vary away from those design guides, and, and we get that. Um, I think the big takeaway is that uh, the design guide is is provided for kind of the best scenario for printability. Um, if you're going to vary, if you're going to steer away from those design guides, then you have to be willing to understand that there's going to be some degree of risk involved with doing so. Um, and we're going to talk about that and how to kind of mitigate some of those risks. So this is what you're going to find in our design guide, right? So there's going to be some information about minimum supported wall thickness, recommended 0.4 millimeters, uh, minimum, un minimum unsupported wall thickness, um, that's 0.6 millimeters, a maximum under supported overhang length. So that is, uh, as you can see here in the image, that's how far out a uh, a piece of the model um, comes out before it be, needs to be supported. So we recommend one millimeter. Um, and we won't go through everything, uh, but certainly look at this design guide and, uh, and make sure that you are, as best you can, trying to follow uh, the recommendations here. The first thing I want to talk about is file format. So uh, Preform allows you to import uh, basically operates with three different file types. One of them is the dot form file. So essentially that is your project file for within preform. So anytime you uh, um, set up a, a part in preform, you're going to want to go ahead and save that. And that's going to be saved as a dot form uh, file. Um, but on import, you can either import STLs or OBJs. And there's a lot of discussion um, on this about which one's better. Um, STL format, I just want to kind of go through the pros and cons. So STL format, it's the most used file format for 3D printing. Um, it does have a, 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 a smaller file size. This is kind of, a, I listed this as a pro and a con, but STL will triangulate, triangulate your 3D model. That can be a problem for a couple of reasons that we'll discuss in a minute. Um, but some people like this because it means that if they're sharing that, that file, it's going to be harder to uh, to modify. So if somebody wanted to say take that file and modify it, um, it it'd be more difficult with an STL file. Um, some of the cons, though, uh, STL does not retain scale, um, so it's working essentially operating on the real the world coordinates that you uh, created the file in. Uh, it does triangulate your model, so that becomes a problem for that we'll see in a minute. Um, it breaks your model into individual triangles. So none of those triangles are joined. It doesn't allow for uh, shared vertices um, and it is prone to uh, print error, um, errors on import. So, and, and I'll show you why that is. We're gonna get a little bit into the weeds. Um, uh, you don't necessarily have to remember everything that I'm gonna talk about because it is so, so far into the weeds but I, I just kind of want to drive this home. OBJs are, um, they're compatible with most CAD software. Uh, it retains the original geometry, so there's no triangulation. If you're going to um, import an OBJ with a quad, that quad is going to kind of follow it through to the uh, to preform or whatever CAD program you're using. Uh, it does allow for shared vertices, um, and it's not really prone to import errors. The cons are that uh, it's less known than the STL. Um, it does have a slightly larger file size, um, and it also does not retain scale. So this is uh, something to really understand for both of these. 
um, is neither OBJ or STL retained scale. They basically record the vertices, um, the world coordinates of the vertices. So when you are moving from software to software, uh, CAD program to CAD program, you really need to understand uh, the units that it was created with, uh, within. Uh, was it created in metrics or um, inches, whatever. Um, and uh, something that I've seen a lot of is broke, uh, models that are broken inside preform uh, that can often be fixed simply by uh, switching to OBJ instead of STL. And this is where we're going to get into the weeds. Um, this is what we're, this is an OBJ file uh, viewed inside of a text editor. And we, you don't have to memorize any of this, right? I just want to kind of drive this point home why OBJ is often a, a better file format than, than STL. Here we can see that we have our vertex coordinates, one, two, they're identified one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You don't see that identification here, but that is how they're listed. Um, you can see there are eight vertices. The next thing we're gonna see is the vertex normals. Um, this is essentially uh, determining which way the, uh, the polygons are facing. We have our texture coordinates. They're useful, but they're not really relevant for this discussion. And then where this kind of becomes important is you can see in the first set, first number of each of these sets of three, um, that is what your vertex coordinates gonna, uh, it's uh, your vertex identification, I should say. Um, so in this face, you can see there are four vertices, one, two, three, and four. Um, they're referencing this one vertex coordinate up here. The reason I, I share this is because you can see that I've circled in the red circle that you have multiple face faces utilizing the same vertex. Um, and that's important because it's showing that OBJ is indeed uh, using uh, shared vertices. And that's really all you need to know is that OBJ utilizes shared, shared vertices and does not break your model apart. STL, on the other hand, does uh, essentially dissemble or, or break your model down into individual triangles. First of all, it does triangulate your, uh, your, uh, your model. So the box that was originally six sides is now, now consists of 12 triangles instead of six squares. Um, I've kind of sectioned off each of these so you can see what's happening. Um, this first face or first triangle uh, is consisting of three vertices. There are unique vertices. These are the world coordinates for those vertices. They're the exact same world coordinates that you would have seen in the OBJ file. Um, but what you can see here is each of these faces, it's not allowing for shared vertices. It's breaking these up into individual unique vertices. And so what that does is when you import your, uh, your model into Preform or any other CAD software, it needs to re-weld those or, or fuse those vertices back together. Um, and it does so using uh, some kind of a proximity threshold. Um, and I'm showing something like that here. So you can see that you have several vertices uh, indicated by blue. Um, what it's gonna do is take those and it's gonna join them together to create one vertex. Where we run into a problem is when there is uh, a vertex that's in close proximity or maybe laying in, maybe in the exact same spot that is not intended to be fused together that does unintentionally become fused together. And what that can do is it, cause, it can cause your, your model to break and have flipped normals and um, uh, non-manifold models. So a lot of things can happen uh, because of this process. And, and this is where STL really has a, a, an issue. Um, is, and it's not a severe issue. It's probably 5% of the models will have this problem um, where unintentional vertices are welded together. So just really wanna drive home the point that uh, if you're seeing broken models inside Preform, models that have faces that are uh, covered up that shouldn't be covered up or it's missing faces or you're seeing some weird kind of graphical uh, issues inside Preform on your model, um, it's often, it can often be fixed just by switching to OBJ. So I know we went into the weeds there. I do think this is an important topic. And I would say that uh, when I was assisting customers, this was actually something that, um, that was uh, a fairly large issue.
Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.